Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church for Sunday, June 21st. We are still in Unit 1, uh, the Summer Quarter Unit, Lesson 3 from the Faith Pathway Adult Quarterly and the Standard Commentary. Uh, unit 1 is entitled Wisdom in Proverbs. And the lesson title from the Faith Pathway Adult Quarterly is Wisdom's Reward. Wisdom's Reward. A devotional reading is taken from Job chapter 28, verses 12 to 28. Background scripture is taken from Job, is Job chapter 1, chapter 42, and Proverbs chapter 8. And our printed passage is Proverbs chapter 8, verses 8 to 14, and verses 17 to 21. Our key verse from the King James Version is verses 10 and 11, chapter 8, verses 10 and 11. Receive my instruction, and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired or not to be compared to it. The lesson aims from the quarterly or number one, recognize the incomparable value of godly wisdom in producing wealth, righteousness, and justice. Number two, appreciate the difference between wisdom's rewards and those of mere wealth. And number three, Analyze your life's pursuit to ensure that godly wisdom with its attendant rewards is in view and is not some cheap substitute. The quarterly lesson has three divisions after the introduction. The first is entitled, Wisdom is Most Precious. And that's covered between Proverbs 8, verses 8 and 11. Second division is fear the Lord, hate evil. That's covered between verses 12 and 14. And the third is walk in righteousness. And that's covered between verses 17 and 21. From the standard commentary, our lesson title is Receive Wisdom's Gifts. Receive Wisdom's Gifts. So the titles are very similar. The quarterly Wisdom's Rewards. Standard Receive Wisdom's Gifts. Additional aims are Describe the Blessings of Godly Wisdom. Number two, explain why the benefits of godly wisdom far outweigh those associated with material wealth. And number three, write a prayer on behalf of someone that godly wisdom will guide his or her lifestyle. And we have two major divisions in this lesson as well. Wisdom's words, verses 8 to 14, and wisdom's wealth, verses 17 to 21. Now, in the in the way of a little background, we uh, we've been in Proverbs now for this is our third week in Proverbs, and we know that it is one of the wisdom books of the Bible. And as I uh, studied the lesson, uh, several things occurred to me, uh, and I'm going to uh, take. Uh, a few minutes near the end and explain something, a good, really good example uh, that all of us uh, <clears throat> should have seen this week of a lack of wisdom at the highest levels <clears throat> in our country. But for now, let's, uh, <clears throat> let's give a little background on the lesson. And Solomon is the author, and he is speaking again to... Um, uh, his son, uh, he began in chapter one, as you recall, he's sharing wisdom with his with his son, and he is uh, using a personification, uh, which is uh, occasionally done throughout the Proverbs of uh, uh, of uh, wisdom uh, as a woman. Wisdom is being personified as a woman, 
And we know, of course, um, that uh, he uses a personification of, of evil or deceit as a woman as well. But in this chapter, he is using wisdom as a woman that is uh, really describing what she is, what she has to offer, how she will benefit the, the one that pursues her, pursues wisdom. And I, and I have to say, you know, we, could, we can open a dictionary, uh, even a Bible dictionary, Unger's Bible dictionary, and we can see a definition or a few definitions of wisdom, uh, which generally means uh, it means prudence, it means uh, exercising good judgment or reason, it means judicious, it means sensible, <clears throat> intelligent, it means a number of things uh, <clears throat> that we uh, have, have, have understood it to mean. But in the Proverbs, God goes beyond those uh, single-term definitions and gives a more full definition of what wisdom is, godly wisdom. And we're talking about godly wisdom here and, to, and, and comparing it to folly. And, and, and he, he actually explains what it is, what it does, what the possessor of it, uh, how the possessor of it benefits. And so we're, we're going to dig deeper into understanding what wisdom truly is. And I have to admit, and I'm sure many of you, if not all of you as well, pray for godly wisdom. I pray for godly wisdom every day. I pray for godly wisdom for my my children, my grandchildren, for myself, my wife, for my entire family, for my church family. I pray for godly wisdom for our government, for our leaders at the highest levels, uh, not only uh, our, our our president and, and those who counsel him, but our legislators, our governors, our judges, and our courts at every level. I pray not for the wisdom of this world, but for godly wisdom. And so uh, it's really refreshing to review uh, the fuller definition that God gives of what wisdom truly is and how it benefits the person that seeks it, that pursues it. So in the first uh, six verses of chapter 8, uh, we see that wisdom is again, uh, is crying out to those uh, with understanding. Uh, she is lifting up her voice. She's taking a stand at the top of the hill in prominent places. She is crying out by the gates, and that's the city gates, uh, the entry to the gates, and she is uh, trying to uh, convince uh, men uh, of understanding and prudence uh, of uh, her value. Uh, and, uh, of course, she's chastising fools. And we read through verse 7, and it says, For my mouth will speak truth. Wickedness is an abomination to my lips. And that is wisdom is saying this. Wisdom speaks the truth. And in and, and the way of an additional, a little additional background, uh, throughout antiquity, uh, those who have believed, who have been believed rather to possess wisdom, have been placed in the highest office, uh, offices of governments. Uh, certainly, those who are wise will live more profitable lives and more peaceful lives and more just lives. And 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 so it's been uh, our natural inclination to put those people in positions of authority so that civilizations will enjoy the same. So we're going to back up here and we're going to read our first passage and then we're going to have some verse-by-verse -verse discussion. But before we do that, let's just go to the throne for a minute. And Father, we know that Lord, you know uh, what you intended for us to learn in this lesson. We pray for your wisdom, your discernment, Lord of all that you intended for us to understand about wisdom and the more importantly than that lord to for a burning desire to pursue it lord to seek it with all our hearts lord and to apply it in our lives lord we pray it not only for ourselves lord but certainly for those who are in positions 
of authority, Lord, in our society, Lord, certainly for our spiritual leaders, Lord. And Lord, we know that you know all that's going on in our country today and indeed in this world today, Lord. We pray for your peace and we pray for your godly wisdom, Lord, that it will prevail, Lord, and that your redeemed that will say so, say that, you, that they are your redeemed, will exercise your wisdom, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So I'm going to read uh, <clears throat> the first passage from the uh, NIV. Uh, I, it'll save me a little going back and forth from the King James Version. And it begins at verse 8. All the words of my mouth are just. None of them are crooked or perverse. The King James says forward. That's crooked or perverse. Number 9. To the discerning all of the things of them, rather, are right. They are upright to those who have found knowledge. Verse 10, choose my instructions instead of silver, knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is more precious than rubies, and nothing you desire can compare with it. So, Wisdom and and the, uh, the the title of this division from the quarterly is wisdom is most precious. Wisdom is declaring what she is. Okay, uh, uh, she, she's saying in verse eight, all the words of my mouth or her mouth are just. None of them are crooked. Are perverse. None of them are twisted. None of them are lies. If we were to, if we were to back up to verse six, uh, we would read that all the words of her words are excellent, right, and truth. And that is uh, the same thing that's being repeated here. Uh, wisdom's words are grounded in righteousness. They are right. They are correct. They are altogether proper. And they are they exclude any falseness, uh, any uh, t anything that's twisted or perverted or any type of perversion of the truth, uh, no half truth. That's what's being said here in verse eight, verse nine. To the discerning, all of them are right. They are upright to those who have found knowledge. Who are the discerning? Uh, those who are already exercising some wisdom, some modicum of judgment uh, to the those who are seeking to understand. Those are the discerning. It says to them, they, the words of wisdom are right. They are completely correct. They are right and, and are upright to those who have found Knowledge. So what? So what does that mean? Let's let's unpack that a little bit. Uh, it means that they are um, straightforward. Uh, they are. Uh, they're not intended to uh, to trap or entrap. There's no fine print. Uh, there are no half truths. Uh, they are plain and understandable uh, and straightforward. The goals of wisdom are straightforward. We remember when Jesus <clears throat> told us to, to, to make our, our speech simple, yea and nay, and any more than that uh, cometh of evil. So we want to be plain in our speech, and wisdom answers directly. And again, uh, it's, 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 it's more precious than silver and gold, as we see in verse 10 here. Verse 10 reads, Choose my instruction instead of silver, knowledge rather than gold. Wisdom instructs. Wisdom uh, not only provides knowledge and instructs with knowledge, but the proper use of knowledge. How to use knowledge aright is, uh, is wisdom, exercising wisdom is using knowledge aright. You know, we, we have a lot of professors, uh, uh, PhDs, that have a lot of head knowledge, 
but they're fools. Certainly those who don't believe in God or are agnostic, because we know Proverbs 14 tells us the fool is said in his heart, there is no, no God. So uh, despite the fact that they have a head full of knowledge and may be considered intelligent by virtue of the knowledge they have, they have no practical uh, way of they don't use that knowledge practically or sensibly or with good judgment and therefore have no true wisdom. And, of course, he's saying it is more valuable, this instruction that wisdom gives, than silver. And, and he says, the, and the finest gold, choice gold, the finest gold. So it is extremely valuable. Verse 11 says, for wisdom is more precious than rubies. And nothing you desire can compare with her. Uh, if you thought about the uh, the most precious thing, a treasure you could, that you would desire, it does not compare to the value of wisdom. And we know that wisdom is closely associated with life and eternal life. The beginning of wisdom, we know, is the fear of the Lord. And Jesus said, what does it profit a man if he gained the whole world and loses his soul? So nothing is as valuable as wisdom, which leads to life and eternal life. Certainly, it leads to a much more uh, prosperous and peaceful uh, uh, physical life, but it leads to a eternal spiritual life as well. And the other thing we have to acknowledge is that any worldly treasures, uh, material wealth that we might acquire is temporal. Uh, wisdom leads to that which is eternal, eternal life, and has value, again, uh, beyond the temporal treasures of this life. Uh, let's move into our next uh, division, which is entitled Fear the Lord hate evil. It's covered between verses 12 and 14. Again, I'm going to read that passage from the NIV. Verse 12 says, I, wisdom, dwell together with prudence. I possess knowledge and discretion. Verse 13, to fear the Lord is to hate evil to hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior and perverse speech. Verse 14, counsel and sound judgment are mine. I have insight, I have power. So wisdom is giving us a full uh, definition of what she is, what she does, what she has to offer the possessor of wisdom. So let's look at 12. And from the, it, it, again, from the, uh, here from the KJV, it says, I wisdom dwell with prudence and find knowledge of witty interventions. And I think I like, <laughs> I like the, uh, uh, the NIV a little better. It, it talks about prudence, discretion. This witty intervention mentioned in the KJV really speaks of discretion. So what's he saying here? Now, if we recall back in chapter 1 of Proverbs, around verse 10, Solomon was, just, was instructing his son not to, to hang with those who were uh, hooligans, who were seeking uh, to shed innocent blood, or hanging with the wrong type of people. Uh, what wisdom is saying is, is, I dwell, I hang with prudence. Uh, and of course, prudence, of course, is is good judgments, and we're using some some uh, some couplets here, some parallels here that mean essentially the synonyms. I should say, mean some uh, the same thing. He, I hang with prudence, and find not well from the uh, from the uh, NIV, and possess knowledge and discretion. Now, what, what what is one of the main qualities of discretion? To 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 be to have discretion means 
uh, uh, that you are able to discriminate. That means to divide, to properly separate that which is good from evil. I know we grew up hating that word discriminate, but uh, that the word in of itself is not an evil word. It means to be able to divide, properly divide that which is right from that which is evil. And in order to stay on the right path, you have to be able to recognize evil. And wisdom is saying, I dwell with discretion, knowledge and discretion. So I'm able to recognize evil and avoid it. That's implied and avoid it. And we should be as well. Verse 13, to fear the Lord is to hate evil. I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior and perverse speech. Now, the Lord, <clears throat> throughout the Bible, if you're familiar with your Bible, the Lord implores us, commands us to be as he is. He is merciful. He, he, he tells us to be merciful as he is merciful. Uh, when he compliments Job, he says he eschews evil. And he is, we know, a man that, 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 that God highly praises. He says there's none like him on the earth. The closer we are, to God, the closer we are in understanding his character, the more we hate, we disdain the things that God hates and disdains, and that is evil. The wisdom and its discretion helps us to recognize evil, and of course, uh, we, his word, God's word enables us to discern or to recognize the good from evil, uh, and he gives some examples of those um, uh, of evil, of evil, uh, uh, and, and, uh, and pride and arrogance, uh, and perverse or twisted speech. Now, pride, of course, is something that God truly hates. Uh, God desires a humble heart. And of course, pride lifts itself up against God. Pride, it exalts itself. It, 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 uh, it really wants to take credit for something that God has done or that God has provided. If we back up to chapter 6 of Proverbs and uh, beginning at verse 16, uh, we read, These six things the Lord hates, yes, seven, are an abomination to him, a proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift in running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and this is the twisted or perverted speech, and one who sows discord among his brethren. So we, we are to hate those things as well. Those things that God hates, we are to hate. And the closer we are to him, the more we hate what he hates and love what he loves. We love one another because he loves us first and he loves our brethren. Verse 14, counsel and sound judgment are mine. I have insight. I have power. Again, we're continuing to get this, this deeper definition of what wisdom is what wisdom possesses, what wisdom offers, what wisdom does. And here in this verse, it's saying counsel and sound judgment are mine. I'm going to talk in a few minutes about a judgment that was made uh, by the Supreme Court this week that was certainly not a sound judgment, but he's saying sound judgment are mine. I have insight. That means able to see deeply into or through uh, a situation. And I have power, power to do what is correct, what is right uh, in the sight of God and in the face of uh, the good, or as a result, if you will, of the good judgment and insight that I have. It, it, it's one thing to know uh, what to do, the right thing to do, and there's certainly something else to have the power to do it. And wisdom is saying she has that power. If we were to skip down to over to Proverbs 21, 22, we see that wisdom has the power to overthrow cities. 
Uh, and also, um, we see from Ecclesiastes 7.19 that a person that is able to keep his heart uh, through wisdom, that's implied, is better than one who rules ten cities or ten that rules cities. Now, before we go further, what is wisdom trying to do in fully describing uh, her characteristics, what she is, what she possesses, what she can do? She is really trying to persuade the hearer to pursue her, to seek her, certainly uh, with all the heart, and to heed her or to listen to her. Uh, that is what uh, wisdom, that's the goal of wisdom here. And now, and again, we're, we're just finishing up the section of our lesson entitled Fear the Lord, Hate Evil. If we fear the Lord, and, 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 and I know, depending on the context, sometimes that means a reverential awe of the Lord or respect, certainly the highest respect and regard. But other times it means to dread, to fear, to terror, to have to have terror because we fear the judgment of the Lord. Uh, and I and I and I'll say to believers, um, we don't fear ultimate judgment. We know we are not going to be condemned as unbelievers, but we need to fear God as we fear our parents when we disobey them, when we step out of line, when we disobey, even as believers, uh, the Lord, we break fellowship with him and the Lord is going to chastise those who are his. Ultimately, he may not do it every time, but if we continue a pattern of disobedience, uh, we better be looking for the woodshed, you know, because the Lord will chastise those who are his. So let's move into our last section here, which is entitled Walk in Righteousness. Walk in Righteousness, and that's covered between verses 17 and 21. And I'm going to read the passage and then we'll back up and have some verse by verse discussion. 17, I love those who love me, and those who seek me find me. Verse 18, with me are riches and honor, enduring wealth and prosperity. My fruit is better than fine gold. What I yield surpasses choice silver. Verse 20, I walk in the way of righteousness along the paths of justice. And verse 21, bestowing a rich inheritance on those who love me and making their treasuries full making their treasuries full. So let's back up to 17. <clears throat> and uh, again, it reads, I love those who love me and those who seek me, find me. King James says, shall find me. Uh, seek me early, shall find me. And, and, the, and, I'm, and, and maybe that... Um, is the one we should look at a little more carefully. When the King James says, seek me early, it means uh, very intentionally or very eagerly or very earnestly. When you get up early to do something, you're very intentional about doing it. So and now he's saying, I love them that love me. Now we want to understand wisdom is speaking, being personified as a woman. Now, uh, even though... God possesses all wisdom. Uh, we know that uh, God loved us first. We love him because he loved us. We know John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, and whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He loves the world, those who don't love him as well as those who do. So we're not wanting to make a an exact comparison uh, between wisdom and God in this context. Wisdom, what wisdom is saying is, uh, I will show my affection, I'll show my commitment, my dedication to those that desire me, okay, who love me, desire me, and those who seek me early. Now, if we, if we can go back over the chapters, the first few chapters of uh, 
Proverbs and we see that wisdom is, is crying out and trying to get the attention of uh, those uh, who would hear in the most uh, heavily trafficked areas uh, in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the gates and in the, in, in, in where, where judgments are rendered and so forth. But also we, we read that wisdom has to be pursued. It has to be earnestly desired in order to be possessed. It isn't just going to drop on you um, um, like a like a branch or like a like a twig uh, from a tree. It is something that has to be pursued. So, and he said, when you seek me, you'll find me. And we know that that sounds very much like something that Jesus said. You'll seek me and you'll find me when you search for me with all your heart. Which Jeremiah said much earlier. You'll seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. And that's speaking of the Lord, speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we we, 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 we have to desire uh, salvation in the case of uh, seeking the Lord Jesus Christ. We, has, we have to desire his forgiveness. We have to desire uh, the substitutionary death uh, on the cross that he suffered for us. And certainly we have to recognize our need of him. We have to recognize that we are in darkness and need uh, needing to be brought into the light before we can come into the light. Verse 18, with me are riches and honor, enduring wealth and prosperity. Now, with wisdom, if you are the possessor of wisdom, you... And this is not, this is a proverb. This is not a, a guaranteed uh, uh, that you're going to have material riches, but you very well may. As a result, there, are many, there were many uh, very wise and rich uh, men uh, in, spoken of in the Bible. Uh, Joseph, for one, well, Abraham uh, grew in his wisdom as his faith grew. Solomon certainly was wise, even though he did not follow his own counsel and extremely rich. And we know uh, Solomon had the wisdom to pray for wisdom when God asked him what he desired when he was coronated king. Uh, and he asked if he if he wanted the necks of his uh, his enemies, if he wanted riches. And, and Solomon said, no, I want wisdom. I want to know how to judge your people, how to go out and come in before them. And God says, because you've asked for that, you know, I will give you that and I'll give you riches and uh, as well. And he made him uh, the richest man of his day. But it's not necessarily talking about material wealth. Now, certainly if we live prudent lives, if we live wise lives, there is a very good chance we will we will benefit materially. Okay, but Spiritual blessings, the spiritual riches far outweigh the material riches, the riches of wisdom and joy and peace in the midst of storms uh, of faith uh, that wisdom gives because we because we 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 have an object of faith. You know, those uh, the unbelievers uh, can come apart uh, be, being faithless and having no object of faith that that they know personally and that they know is the creator and the sustainer of the world and one that loved them enough to send his one and only son for them. So he's talking about riches and honor. And again, these, this can be material riches, uh, material and spiritual and honor. The person that possesses wisdom uh, is generally one who also is honored, who possesses Honor. So this is what wisdom has to offer. Again, the possessor. And when it says, it says, enduring wealth and prosperity. Now we know that, uh, as I said earlier, material blessings uh, are temporal. What is endu what, what 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 might be some of the enduring riches that wisdom or prosperity that wisdom might offer? You know. Uh, Solomon is giving or trying to impart wisdom to his son. Okay, he's he is trying to uh, share a legacy uh, with his son 
uh, that is going to be more valuable than material riches. Uh, my mother didn't leave us much, but my mother left us some wisdom, and we'll call it even common sense. And, and I, I, one of the commentators said that his father used to say that common sense ain't common. And I, I, I've been saying that, and I've said that to my children as well. Common sense is not common. But my mother left us some wisdom that was an enduring uh, riches uh, or treasure that she was able to pass on to us as a legacy. And the most, of course, the greatest wisdom was to point us to God, was to actually bring us to the foot of the cross. Uh, now, and it's, he goes on to say, and righteousness, durable riches and righteousness. Again, this can be real wealth, uh, uh, can be found in, in wisdom, and righteousness means the, the, uh, a, a, a good judgment, righteous judgment. It means an uprightness. Uh, a correct way of living, a circumspect way of walking before the Lord. Verse 19, my fruit is better than fine gold. What I yield surpasses choice silver. So what, what is one of the first things we think of when we think of fruit? You know, um, fruit goes well with wisdom. We see that uh, back in uh, Proverbs Three eighteen, that the tree, uh, that it is portrayed, wisdom is portrayed as a, a tree of life. So what, when we think of fruit, we think about something that is produced, and I think of something that is produced naturally. In fact, that's why they call it produce. They call fruit and vegetables produce. It's produced naturally from the ground. Uh, once the seeds are planted. Uh, they don't have to work. They don't have to toil. Uh, they are nurtured uh, by the soil. God created the seed. There is something internal going on in the seed and external being provided to the seed by the nutrients in the soil. And so it is produced uh, by trees or by other plants. Fruit is. And so this is a natural production. You know, John 15 and John 15, the Lord implores us to abide in him. The good vine, the true vine, the other vine that uh, uh, what, that was spoken of in the Old Testament, particularly in Isaiah, was Israel, the, the vine that produced sour grapes. But Jesus came as the true vine and he said, abide in me and you will produce much fruit. If we don't provide, if we don't abide, he may prune us, and those branches that still don't provide will be cut off and will be cast into the fire. But once we're abiding, all the all the fruit has to do is cling, the, the twigs have to do is cling to the vine, and they produce fruit. They're nourished by the vine, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, and they produce fruit naturally. And that is what he's saying. I produce fruit, and that fruit uh, can be good works, can be things done that are pleasing to God, and they are better than gold. He's saying they are bet they surpass choice silver, better than fine gold. That's the highest quality, twenty-four karat gold, and better than the purest or choicest silver. It's Twenty. I walk in the way of righteousness along the paths of justice. So what's he saying there? He, he's, now, from the King James Version, i got to back up to this one. It says, I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the path of judgment. And I like that, that translation better. He leads, wisdom, or she rather, wisdom leads in the way of righteousness. What is that? That means in the right way, the way that is 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 right and pleasing to God. It means I lead uh, people in doing, saying, thinking the right things, the way of righteousness, and in the path of judgment. That means good judgment or justice. Uh, the NIV translates the word justice as translated judgment in the KJV. And that means what? To be just, to do the right thing, to 
uh, to do the right thing by other people. Uh, and, and we know there's a lot of clamoring in the streets now for justice. And Lord, I'm praying for that. I'm praying that justice will be done for all these families, uh, for these men, so the family of these men that uh, that have been killed, uh, and certainly that justice will uh, will be done will be done throughout our nations, regardless of race or regardless of color or station in life. And finally, verse 21, uh, it says, "Bestowing a rich inheritance on those who love me, and making their treasuries full." So what's he saying? Uh, rich inheritance. King James says that they may cause those that love me to inherit substance and I will fill their treasures. Uh, to inherit means uh, to uh, obtain something uh, uh, that is a legacy from someone else uh, to, to be the beneficiary of. And so uh, those who Love, wisdom will be the beneficiary of substance. Again, this can be material or durable in nature, spiritual. And we know most of what we are going to inherit, uh, the most important thing we're going to inherit, in fact, we have is eternal life, okay? Uh, the material possessions certainly are nice, but again, we have to re remember that they are temporal. And, and as I said, those who possess wisdom are more likely to, to possess and enjoy material blessings uh, as well as spiritual. So again, these, the, when he talks about filling the treasuries, these treasures can be material benefits or the treasures that come from living by the counsels of wisdom. Uh, and they are... Uh, that habit of living by the counsels of wisdom is something that we want to pass on to our children as a legacy. As I mentioned, my mother didn't leave us much, but she passed on her uh, practicing, uh, uh, following the wise counsels of wisdom in her life. And certainly we learn that by her word and observation by observing her father wasn't a dummy either i don't mean, mean don't mean to suggest that he was but what we learned spiritually was from mom father was very industrious uh but and he taught many things as well but we learned um we were brought to the foot of the cross by mom now that's that's pretty much our lesson i i did i did mention i wanted to take a few minutes uh and just talk about an example of um, a lack of wisdom, uh, a lack of the exercise of good judgment at the highest levels in our country uh, that occurred this week. On Monday of this week, those of you who have watched the news know that the Supreme Court uh, essentially redefined uh, sex, uh, what sex is in our country, and they actually did some legislating from the bench. And and of course they are they that they've done this because the Senate, the Congress, and the Senate have failed to act uh, where they needed to, and I'm sure they're going. To, we certainly hope and pray that they will now. But for those who don't know, uh, sex is no longer something that's determined by a person's biology. Uh, and God said from the beginning, male and female created He them but is determined by a person's uh, choice. Uh, there is uh, dysphoria now, there's sexual dysphoria. People can uh, uh, believe themselves to be women trapped in male bodies and vice versa. And what the court basically says is this is in accordance with the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Nothing could be further from the truth. In 1964, they did not know what sexual dysphoria was. They knew nothing about transsexualism, uh, most likely. Uh, and certainly that was not the intent of that act. But they basically rewrote that and added a new definition for sex uh, that, of course, is going to precipitate 
many uh, battles in the court. Uh, this is going to mean that males can compete with females on athletic fields, that, uh, that people uh, can, will employ employers, uh, churches um, will be forced most likely or to hire uh, people that uh, are, are transsexuals, uh, uh, meaning uh, not necessarily having actually had uh, their sex changed but think they're women when they're men uh, dressing as women and, uh, uh, and, and, and being forced on employers on threat of lawsuits. Uh, this is going to turn our society upside down. Uh, and again, the lawsuits will be flying uh, before this time next month, I'm sure. But uh, it, it, is, it is a travesty because those who we've entrusted to exercise judgment at the highest level, to exercise wisdom at the highest level in our Supreme Court, could make such a, a foolish decision, could, could not foresee the, the consequences uh, that will turn our society upside down of such a decision. And I just, uh, as I said, I pray for God. I've been praying for the courts for years. I pray every day for them. And Lord, I, I will continue to. And, I, and one of the things that I was reminded of, certainly when I heard the news, is that we cannot put our faith in men. Uh, we are not told to put our faith in men. We have to keep our faith uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ. We have to keep our focus on him, not what man will do, because I don't care how sincere uh, you think they are. I don't care how wise you think they are. Uh, they can certainly disappoint, and they can certainly be influenced by evil and by foolishness, as uh, was the case, I believe, in the Supreme Court judgment uh, this Monday. Don't know what you think about that, but I had to get that off my chest. I'm probably going to be writing uh, my senator, my congressman. I'm going to be most likely be writing. Uh, I'm sorry, writing the Supreme Court as well to express my sincere disappointment in that uh, judgment. So we pray again that you uh, more fully understood what wisdom is, what it has to offer, and I pray that you are seeking it early with all diligence, and that you are applying it, godly wisdom, not the wisdom of this world, which is foolishness to God, but godly wisdom in your lives each and every day. May God bless you and may he keep you is our prayer.